Welcome back to Fenrir Canine Questions, and this is the video where you guys can submit your questions. You send them to my wonderful wife, Rachel. She picks them out at random, asks me if we can help you. We will help you. So without further ado, let's not waste any more time. Dive straight into today's video. Okay, so today's video is going to be more of a general topic rather mm. than a specific question. And that's just because I've had quite a few questions about this. Good. And that is about raising two puppies together mm -hmm. so whether people are getting two from the same litter or two around a similar time how you go about that basically okay that's um an excellent topic and um, yes let's make a good idea we'll make this a dedicated video because that would be really helpful because a lot of people find themselves in this in this situation so when i work with people that are getting two puppies from the same litter First of all, you need to be aware that it is hard work. Raising one puppy is very difficult. It's also like the situation we talk about with having kids though, that a lot, some of the areas and elements are incredibly difficult because you're managing two lunatics that are trying at every stage imaginable to kill themselves by chewing on everything that could cause Why? them harm they're yeah going crazy they're pooing and weeing everywhere so toilet training is double as hard i just want to say that our children don't poo and wee everywhere <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know the point i'm trying to say but in terms of like what it's like with children if you've got two small kids it can be carnage at times can't it keeping yeah. track of them both but then you get to that stage where it's actually lovely because they play with each other and they'll keep themselves busy yeah. with dogs getting two from the same litter there's lots of different pros and cons uh, and it's kind of in a similar realm now we'll break it down into um, a couple of areas really in terms of what most people want to know really is how to train yeah. two dogs getting them at the same time so again obviously I'm always at this stage and I refer to my perfect puppy course because that is the procedure that we use when we raise our puppies yeah. if i coach or help people raising their puppies it's the program that i would use in person and it's also the program that tons of people have gone through online and it's available at femreardogtraining.com um, and that process is a, is a lovely step-by-step -step procedure and in that process i always talk about building foundation layers with everything we do whether that's manners obedience or socialization mm -hmm. once we've built that foundation layer which will be under zero distractions very much one-to-one -one, you can then layer up on top of that foundation layer that might be time it might be distance it might be bringing in other handlers to work on the same things when we're talking about two dogs from the same litter I recommend that you do those foundation layers independent from each other. So you do it one to one, you put one dog in another room or Rachel might take one dog into the living room and have a cuddle or, and then I would have one dog and do the work with them and then you swap them over. Yeah. Now, once you've built that foundation layer, that's through kind of your traditional training methods or usually through operant conditioning methods, every kind of dog training comes in. After that, and that's where things can be difficult because it's twice the work, but after that, you tap into a theory called uh, the model rival theory, which is um, it's becoming a very popular theory in kind of the academic canine behavior and training realms. Basically, it's around role models and it's about kind of creating a little bit of rivalry and that rivalry seeking the attention from the leader in the situation, i.e. us. Once you get to that stage, you can play off on that model rival theory or utilizing them each other as positive role model dogs, which is something that the vast majority of dog trainers implement. I do the same thing with my Labrador Sully. A lot of the work that I'm able to do, or at least a lot of the unpicking of problems, I can do through observing how Sully manages a situation with a dog. And I'm like, ah, okay, Sully's worked out what the problem is. He's shown me what the solution is we now need to go in and do that ourselves as leaders. And you can tap into that through sibling rivalry as well. So it can make things very easy. So if one dog's having a lot of success and you're positively reinforcing that behavior, whether it's training or whether it's manners, or whether it's socialization, the other dog will observe that and they will seek to replicate that good behavior. On the flip side of that, if you're correcting any form of bad behaviors, whether it's through uh, verbal corrections or you take it to a punitive level through physical corrections, the other dog will also witness that and not want to have that behavior corrected so they will also avoid wanting to do those behaviors now i've been waffling for quite a long time there so i'll let you jump in i was just going to say so to put it simply you keep them apart while you teach them the basics then once they've got that down 
then you can put them together to mm -hmm. do it at the same time yeah. so, or in the same room. Yeah, so I might be doing, I like to work on a table with puppies just because I'm so tall and it brings them up to my level. So I might be working with one puppy here on this table and Rachel might have the other puppy on the other side of the room on a lead just watching. And then we'll swap over and the other dog gets to watch. And it just, you, you'll notice that things start to scale very well. It's also brilliant for separation anxiety because they've got each other. A lot of people's concerns around them is them becoming too reliant on each other, mm -hmm. which I understand, and it does happen. But that would happen, wouldn't it, if you already had an older dog in the home yeah. as well? It's the same... And that's what I have to do. When people bring that concern to me, I have to let them know, well, why are you getting two dogs if that's yeah. a concern? If you're getting two dogs, you want them to build a good relationship yeah. and, and for the positives to come out of that relationship. So in that front, I kind of tell people just not to worry. It's absolutely mm -hmm. fine. There's no worries there whatsoever. But the overarching theory really is to start separately, like you said then allow them to come together and then allow them to learn from each other and kind of again always be setting them up for success positively praise and reinforce success and if the other one's observing it they will equally want to replicate that behavior to seek that um positive reinforcement mm. and success of themselves which is basically the the model rival theory summarized down into a sentence so um, again it's something that i think as is always the case it's in the academia world now and it will slowly get trickled down yeah and then i think it will it's spread. still in the early yeah so early stages of yeah as part of my master's degree i've been doing a lot of kind of research around the model rival theory and it's something that you, you explain it and people are like oh yeah that's what we do anyway with our role model dogs um, but what what tends to happen is once something gets studied at an academic level it then over five ten years trickles down into your uh, local dog training level so I guarantee the model rival theory give it five years will be something that's everywhere and everybody will be talking about it just how at the minute positive only and modern training methods are the in mm -hmm. thing um, and for us as balanced trainers that utilize the best aspects of all areas to put as many tools in our toolbox as possible the model rival theory is an excellent tool to use when you have sibling dogs and raising them at the same time okay so away from training um like how would you recommend people go about having them at home what should they share a crate should they share a food bowl or is that better separate or is it a preference thing another excellent question so again i always recommend crate training and i would ideally like you to see them being crated individually now you can get a big crate with a divider and have them in the same crate but it be divided the only reason i recommend that is because unfortunately it does happen dogs can get ill and they often might need to go for vets and if they need to have an operation or stay overnight they're going to stay in a crate so it's always a very good thing for a dog to be comfortable on its own in a crate um, when they're at home if you want them to sleep together then they're going to sleep together for the rest of their lives so it's no issue but i do just think that it's a good skill for them to be able to have and then crate training is an amazing tool for things like um, separation anxiety work and for toilet training yeah so to do that anyway is an excellent opportunity I think that you should always feed your dogs together. I always bang on about how important meal times are for the relationship between yourself and your dogs. And it's the best way that one, two, or even with puppies up to four times a day, you have to feed them. So why not utilize that time to reinforce your yeah. boundaries, relationships, and your leadership with your dog? It's just a, a wasted opportunity if you leave food down or don't take the extra 30 seconds to use it as a leadership drill and a layer up an obedience drill so with two dogs um, if ever i'm feeding multiple dogs i never split them up um, kind of pack dynamics and hierarchies at feeding time are incredibly important so i just give them a little bit of space they all go into a sit the food gets put on the floor in front of them and they all go into a stay until they're told that they can break i will stay there and observe just to ensure that i wouldn't allow a dog to go to another dog's bowl and try and steal their food yeah. because that dog will then resource guard and it can cause issues but myself as the leader will interject before that became an issue which then allows the dog that would be having its food interjected on trust me more trust my leadership more because i wouldn't allow that to happen um, some people take that to the extreme and will do pack feeding which can work and you let them sort that out between themselves um, i think for everyday owners that's not a good things you have to be very skilled with a lot of finesse to be able to manage the bigger picture of that but in terms of two sibling dogs um feed them together put them into a sit and stay 
put the food down, observe um, and ensure that it's all going well. Once they finish their dinner, remove the bowls, put them away to one side. It's just an excellent opportunity. So yeah, create them, they can go together. It'll help with separation anxiety. It'll help them not cry all night. It'll help them yeah. not cry and bark when you go out and leave them. Uh, that's a wasted opportunity to not utilize that. And again, feed in, that's how I'd recommend feeding all groups of dogs, let alone uh, the same is applicable for siblings. Okay, and just quickly, like probably a final thing is just how would you go about walking two dogs? Ooh, great choice, uh, great shout. So again, when we're talking about heel work, we always, that's part of the process of building that foundation layer. Um, so you need to build that foundation of a dog walking nicely to heel because all dogs should walk to heel, that's my opinion. You build that individually, one dog at a time. So then you have two choices with two dogs in particular. You can have one dog on each side or you can have both dogs on one side or the other side. Now, traditionally, heel is done to the left. When we had Sully and I was training Mabel, I had them both to my left. Some people like one dog on either side. Some people like them both to the right. That's completely up to you how you want to do that. But whatever, you make that decision beforehand. So for me, for example, I wanted them both to the left. Sully already had a beautiful heel work to my left. And I wanted Mabel to do it. So when I was teaching Mabel that foundation layer away from Sully, no distractions, I taught her to heel work to my left. And then as part of building up on that foundation layer, as I always talk about, one Started of those stages was introducing Sully. I then tapped into the model rival theory yeah. of Sully would walk to heel. It was a little bit confusing for Mabel, but she would observe me rewarding and praising Sully for walking nicely to heel. They soon worked out what would happen is Sully would be a little bit further and off to the left and Mabel would be a little bit behind and on Sully's right, but both to my left hand side. That worked out that it worked nicely. She would then do that. She'd get praised and rewarded. And then we just built up that and built up the distraction yeah. level and the complexity. So if you did have the preference to have one on either side, would you do the foundation layer on that side? So say like if you'd wanted Mabel on your right, yeah. would you have done yeah, that on that's the exactly right how it so if i had two siblings and i wanted one on each side puppy a in the foundation layer would be trained to walk to heel on the left again it's all in the puppy course and how to do that puppy b would be trained how to do it yeah. on the right and then as part of layering up on top of that one of those things would be them doing, doing it, it at the same, same time yeah one on the left one on the right and again it's all about starting simple build the foundation set them up for success by slowly building up on that over time not expecting too much going for too big of a jump them failing you getting angry punishing the dog breaking down the relationship not being calm it's just a recipe for disaster so build it up and then slowly build on top of that foundation layer and that's how i do it for heel walk anything else i think that's it i'm gonna zip it there before i start waffling and go off on one about that topic because that was an awesome question whoever answered that thank you that was amazing if you want to ask a question come over to our instagram at femra canine leaders the link is down in the description box rachel manages all the instagram but she'll do it she does it on a story don't you and you yeah. can write your questions in the story she saves them all and then asks them on this series usually at the weekend yeah so um, we'll, we'll save up a batch of them but anyway hope you enjoyed that video hope it was helpful hope you got something from it um, and if you are new here subscribe if you enjoyed it like and we'll see you on the next episode of femra canine training